guys, it's Kristen with Hooks, Books, and Wanderlust. Today I wanted to pop on and share with you a really quick pattern how to make my go-to washcloth. Um, this is something that I always use for um, housewarming gifts or just at my own kitchen sink or in the bath. Um, it's very versatile, they are very durable, and they last forever. And plus, they're really super pretty, honestly. For this washcloth pattern, I use what's called the lemon peel stitch, and that is what gives it this gorgeous texture that you can see here. Um, it is a combination of double crochet and single crochet, just alternated across the row. And you will work the double crochet for your working row into the single crochet from the row before it and then vice versa. So I wanted to show you how to do that. And also this one I kind of spiced up a little bit and uh, did like a little bit of a stripe to it. So I figured I would go ahead and show you how to do that. That way you can see how I do color changes as well. So to get started, I am using two different colors of Lily Sugar and Cream. I've got their gray here. This is one of my favorite grays. It is called Overcast. And then for my main color, I've got my um, Lily Sugar and Cream in the color Acru. Acru? Acru? I don't know how to say it. <laughs> anyway, um, I also use a six millimeter hook, also known as a J hook. You'll need a darning needle and scissors. So let's get started. First thing you're going to do is you're going to work with your main color, in this case, the acru. I'm gonna get started here with just a basic slip knot. So I'm going to take my yarn tail in my right hand and the working tail in my left, and I'm just going to kind of make a loop. I'm gonna pull my, my working loop is sitting on top of my, um, I'm sorry, my yarn tail is sitting on top of my working loop, and I'm just going to fold it under and take my hook and grab it and pull it through. This is actually a little different than most people do it, and this is a trick that I learned from Jill over at Gum Leaf Crochet. Um, if you have not seen her tutorials on how to do this, um, you really should check it out. It's a fun way to kind of really hide the knot that you will, it's a telltale knot once you've got your work started. And this way you can tighten it up and it makes it so much less noticeable. So I am going to start out after my slip knot here, I'm going to chain out an even number of crochet stitches. That is the key to working the lemon peel stitch is that you need an even number. So I am going to chain out 32. That way I end up with 30 stitches um, as I will be working my first double crochet into the third chain. So 32. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I do it by fives here because it helps me keep my chains even and it helps me keep track of my number of stitches much more easily. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, plus that's about what I can hold in my hand before I have to move my fingers anyway. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. And now I'm going to do two more, 32, one, and two. That way I have my uh, two chains for my beginning row here. So I'm going to start my first row by yarning over and double crocheting into the third chain from the hook. Now I've got one, two, three. And as you can see, I've got the side view of my chains here and you can see that back bump. That is what I'm actually going to work into because that gives you this nice V on the bottom edge of your uh, washcloth here. And that's something that I always like to see. So I'm gonna yarn over and double crochet working into that back bump. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And that is the first double crochet of the round. 
Now for the lemon peel, as I mentioned before, we are going to alternate doing double crochet with single crochet. So I did a double crochet, the next stitch is going to be single. So I'm going to go ahead and just work back into that back bump, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So it kind of looks a little messy right now, but trust me, once we get going um, and add rows to it, you will see that beautiful texture that I showed you before. So we're gonna go ahead and double crochet and then single crochet into the next stitch here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue alternating a double crochet with a single crochet all the way to the end of my row here. And once I get to the end, I will come right back. Okay, now I have reached the end of my row. I've got two chains left to work into. So I'm going to go ahead and work my next two stitches, a double crochet and then a single crochet. Now with the lemon peel stitch, if you start on a double crochet, you will end on a single crochet because as I mentioned before, it is a multiple of two. You need an even number. So um, I've got my first row here. And the first thing I'm going to point out to you is this slip knot that we started with. Um, watch how you can kind of just tighten that right back up. And it's like perfect. It doesn't even, show anything there. It's so hidden. All right, uh, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna work our second row. This is gonna be our repeat row. It's actually exactly the same as the first one. The only difference is we're working into stitches instead of into chains. So once again, I'm gonna start with a chain two and I'm gonna turn my work so that I'm working in turned rows. And this first stitch here is the single crochet that we ended on the last time. So I'm going to double crochet into the single crochet. And now I've got my next stitch is the, du the double crochet and I'm going to single crochet into that. So single crochet. And as you'll see, we're just gonna continue repeating and alternating double crochet and single crochet all the way across the row making sure that if we are working into a double crochet, we are single crocheting, and making sure that if we are working into a single crochet, we are double crocheting. And that is the lemon peel stitch. So I am gonna go ahead and finish this row, and uh, the next one after it, we're gonna repeat this row um, over and over again, but we are gonna have that color change. So I am gonna go ahead and um, just continue working the next two rows. So we're gonna have three rows total before we change colors. So I will check in with you in just a minute. Okay, so I am just about done with my third row of the lemon peel stitch. And as you can see, I'm already starting to get that very pretty texture. So I am going to go ahead and finish my last two stitches here. Got a double crochet and single crochet. Now, when I do my color changes, um, there's a little bit of a trick to that as well. I figured I would show you since we're here. Um, I will go ahead and do my normal single crochet like as I pull up my loop, but on my final pull through of a stitch, in this case, I would normally yarn over and pull through these two loops. But instead of doing that, I am actually going to grab my uh, contrasting color here, this gray, and I am going to pull a loop of that through. That way I finish with the main color here. The stitch is all in the main color, but I'm already set up for my next row. So I'm just gonna pull this a little tighter, not too tight, otherwise it'll look a little funny. And I'm gonna grab my uh, yarn tail here with the gray and just kind of make sure that it's all kind of tight and it's not too loosey-goosey. And then it's just a matter of I usually hold these two tails kind of together to hold them in place as I do my chain stitch and work that first stitch into the into this fourth row. So I'm going to go ahead and chain one and two and turn. Again, this is just a repeat of row two. We're just doing the lemon peel stitch. The only difference is that we have switched colors. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab my gray yarn tail and kind of pull it to the top of my stitches here and back behind them. And I am going to crochet over them. So when I double crochet into that first stitch, 
I am also going to make sure I go underneath the tail of that gray yarn and pull up a loop that way. And then just make my double crochet as normal. And then I will just continue doing the lemon peel stitch here. So I'll do a single crochet. I'm going under the V of my stitch and then under the tail, pulling up a loop and single crochet. And just repeating that over and over again until I have buried that tail inside my work. So into the stitch and under the tail. like so. Now I generally only will um, crochet only half of the tail. I like to pull it tight, make sure all of my stitches are secure, which they are, um, but then I will leave that tail so that I can then weave it back through the other direction. It just makes the tails a little more secure when you can um, weave them multiple times in different directions. So from there I am just going to continue doing the lemon peel stitch just like I have in the previous two rows and work my way all the way across the row, alternating that double crochet with single crochet. And again, making sure that any double crochets I make are into a single crochet from the row before. And then similarly, that any single crochets I go to make are made into a double crochet from the row before. So we're just going to continue across the row Oops, single crochet, double crochet, single, double, single, double. The stitch is so rhythmic. Honestly, it's one of my favorite things to do it gives such beautiful texture it's such a like zen type of stitch I can just tune out and just kind of enjoy the process I don't have to think about it too much and that's always one of my favorite things too it's great when you're working a project um, with the lemon peel stitch I can tune out it's one of those easy ones I can tune out of the stitch and maybe I've got the TV on or something or music playing and it's just don't have to think about it too hard. Okay, so I'm coming up on my last single crochet of this row. And just like before, um, I'm only doing a single row of the gray. I forgot to cut my tail here of the A crew. So let's do that. I'm gonna cut a nice like right around six inch tail because I will have to weave that in later. And like I said, I will try and weave it this way and then come about halfway and then go back. But that is for later. So for right now, we're gonna pick back up. I've got my last single crochet to make here. Pull up a loop. And just like I did at the end of row three, I am going to grab my main color yarn and pull a loop through the final pull through there. So I've got my last stitch is all in gray, but I'm set up for my next row. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my gray yarn again about a six inch tail there and hold on to my tails here while I do my chain and turn here chain two turn so I'll leave that gray one out and then just like I did for row four I'm gonna double crochet into my single crochet from the row before and I'm also gonna go underneath that a crew tail and double crochet and then single crochet again I am crocheting over the yarn tail here just to kind of hide it inside my work it's a little less weaving to do on the back end If this were for a blanket or something, I probably would just go ahead and do the whole tail instead of stopping halfway. 
Um, and the reason I don't do that is because this is a washcloth and it's going to get used and washed and dried and washed and dried over and over again. And I just really wanna make sure that those tails are secured really well in there. So I'm going to continue doing this across the row and I will be right back. Okay, so I've gotten almost to the end of this row now and I just wanna show you how I do this other tail. So we have the yarn tail of the gray here at the start of our gray row. And I am actually almost to the point where I dropped it and I just started crocheting like normal, not trying to cover the work, cover the tail anymore. But I'm gonna now pick that tail back up and start to crochet over it going the opposite direction. Um, that way it's just, again, weaving it in a little bit. So I'm just gonna kind of pull it up and it does get hidden inside the gray stitches, which is why I do it here. And I am just gonna go ahead and do my lemon peel stitch, again, working that tail into the stitch. So double crochet to the end here. And then single, make sure I'm getting that tail in there. And I will end on a single crochet here. My yarn tail caught in. And now you can see it just pops right out the edge there. So I can kind of pull stuff a little tight and it's pretty well hidden in there. And then when I go back to do my border, I can camouflage it even more. So um, that's really all there is to the pattern. You're going to do three rows of the lemon peel stitch in your main color and then a single row in your contrasting color but it is literally just a row to repeat all the way up um, and I cannot remember off the top of my head let's see how many there are let's see I want to say it was something so I have three four so four eight twelve sixteen twenty 24, 25, 26, 27. So 27 rows total. So that's what we'll do. We'll just continue working that pattern um, all the way up to the end. So I will see you once I've got the end and we will start the border, which I did not do on the original one, but I am gonna show you how to do it here on this one. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. Okay, I said that I was going to come back once I had the whole thing done again, but I thought that it might be beneficial to go ahead and show you guys um, just how to do that color change one more time. So I have stopped here at my last stitch and my last stitch is going to be a single crochet. So once again, I'm going to single crochet as normal. I had just pulled up a loop, but before I do that final pull through, I'm going to cut my yarn. And I am going to grab my working tail here for the contrasting color and just kind of fold it over, make a loop, and pull that loop through those last two loops on my single crochet. And grab the tails here together, and then that way I can do my chain two without pulling everything out, turn, and I will start to lemon peel stitch over my tail, my gray tail here. The um, cream one I will just have to weave, weave in again later, but uh, for right now, we can go ahead and crochet over this tail. And like I said, I only do about halfway because then I pick it up on the other re return pass here. So let's see how much I've got here. Just pull that tight, kind of just cinch everything in. Got about half my tail left, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold that back so that I don't continue to crochet over it anymore. And I will just finish my lemon peel stitch for the gray row here all the way across. And I will be right back. Okay, so once again, I've reached the end of my gray row here and I've got a loop pulled up so that I can start my final single crochet of that row. I've got my loop of my Acru yarn. I'm just gonna slip it onto my hook and pull it through those last two loops. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and cut my gray yarn here. And now I am ready to go ahead and start in on my next row of the A crew color. So I'll chain two and turn. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and work over the cream colored tail here, alternating those double and single crochet stitches for the lemon peel stitch. And let's see how much tail I have here. Sorry, I bumped the camera there. So I'm going to pull that tight. And I'm going to leave that tail off. And now I will finish the lemon peel stitch across this row here. And I will show you how to crochet over the other direction on our gray tail here just one more time so that you can see it. And I use the same technique when I'm doing the A crew and I'm um, going the other direction too. So uh, it's the same technique, Doesn't it's not color specific, but I will show you how to do that here in just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have reached the point here where I've met up with my tail from the start of the previous row. And I'm gonna just kind of pull it up to the top of my stitches and just work my lemon peel stitch over it. So I will make sure that my hook goes under the tail and the stitch, pull up a loop, single crochet, and again we'll alternate for the lemon peel. So now I'm going to do a double crochet, making sure I get that tail in there as well, all the way to the end. And I will work my final single crochet of the row, again, making sure I'm grabbing, getting the hook underneath the stitch and the tail. And I will just kind of tighten that, just tug on it real gently, just enough to like um, tighten everything up, but not to pull everything. So I will go ahead and do two more rows of lemon peel stitch in my cream or a crew color here. And then I will continue alternating three rows of the cream with the gray um, until I have 27 rows and I will be right back. Okay, we're back here. I have finished my 27 rows of the lemon peel stitch. And again, I alternated three rows of my main color, the A crew, with one row of my contrast color or overcast um, is the name of the color. And I am ready now to do my border. Um, I am going to just show you guys really quick kind of how I do it. Um, the thing to remember to try and crochet evenly, especially when you are going along a side edge, is you want to think about the stitches that are starting each of your row. So here, the last stitch I made was a single crochet. So I will put one stitch for every single crochet and two stitches for every double crochet row that I come around. So I've got my chain one here and I'm gonna go ahead for my single crochet border, I am going to um, do one single crochet for every row that ends here with uh, a single crochet and then two single crochets for every double crochet row. So I'm gonna work right down into the middle of that stitch Kind of pull my actually I need to pull my working loop a little got a little big on me there so let's try that again in the middle of the stitch pull up a loop and single crochet and so I'm coming up on my double crochet and I just kind of try and put my my hook where I can fit it um, it's not necessarily there's no science to it per se it's just whatever you decide to do you want to try and stay consistent with it I don't like how that looks. It's kind of creating this little V. So I'm gonna back that out. And I'm gonna work my first single crochet for my double crochet row here, right at the base of the single crochet from that row. 
it's kind of the top of the double crochet and then I'll do one into the side of the double crochet and then here I am back with my single crochet and at my double and as I mentioned we have those ends that we wove in and they're just kind of hanging out there now I'm going to crochet over those as I work my way down along these stitches So again, it's just about crocheting evenly and trying to stay consistent with where you're placing your hook when you do this. So this one got a little bit pulled out because I've got this tail here from when we started that row. So I'm going to pull it back taut, nice and tight. and continue crocheting. So you're just going to continue doing that all the way along the row. Now I'm um, going to just point out again, so we had that long tail. This never got weaved in when we were working the body of our washcloth. So I'm only going to crochet over half of this tail because there again when I am done I'm going to take my darning needle and weave it back the other direction because these will get washed and used and we don't want those ends coming back out. So that is what I will do and I just missed that tail there. So I'll go back in there. I'm going to push that one back. So let's see where I'm at on my tail here. So I've got about half of that first tail and it looks like I've reached a second tail now. So this is that first one. I'm going to go ahead and fold that back. Take my working yarn and start crocheting over these ends now. I will say that when you get to the rows like this, this was, there's my double crochet and what I latched into here was the chain two. Um, that's something that, you know, I just do that because I just grab, that's where I could easily put my hook. So I don't overthink it, just get it in there and try and make it consistent. So once again, we have this, it's pulling, and that's because we have this other tail here. So I'm going to pull that a little tighter, crochet into that space. I'm going to go a little farther on that one. So it can be a little tricky doing the border just because there are so many ends on this particular pattern. Now, if you had chosen to just work a solid color, then obviously you're going to have a lot less ends um, to worry about weaving in, but uh, sometimes it's nice to go the extra effort and put that little added interest of the contrasting color in there. Okay, I think that's about halfway on that one. So we will go ahead and pick this up here. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera here. Super professional, Kristen. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to bend that little gray piece back and I'll come back through and I'll trim those um, once I've finished all the border. So I'm going to pull this back in a little bit because I've got this other tail here. Work into that space, making sure I get over those tails. Okay, so I've got about halfway on that one tail here. I'll just do one more for good measure here, just for funsies. Okay, 
Actually, those birds look like they're about halfway now. So we will go here. Oh, I missed that tail. See? It's easy to accidentally miss one, so you just got to kind of go slow and make sure you're checking the back to make sure you get all your tails. And if worse comes to worse, you can always weave them in with the darning needle later. It's not that big a deal, but I'm trying to make a little less work for myself later on because Siri does not weave in our ends for us yet. If they can make that happen, be all over it. So we're gonna pull that in, pull this in a little. Nope, I missed one tail, didn't I? the tail here from this end of our acre row the beginning of our gray row so I wanted to make sure I grabbed that in there I'm going to take that little gray piece out bend it to the back tug again on those tails just to make sure we're not bunching up and now as I reach my corner here, oops, get my second one for that double crochet row. I have just completed my first side edge here. It's a little, a little wavy and that's because I need to block it, but it'll stretch out once it flattens out. But anyhow, so I've got, let's see how well you can see this. I've got my full edge here. And so now I need to turn a corner. And to do that, I'm gonna do a little chain one, and then I'm gonna work my first single crochet for this border on this side. So I'm gonna try and carry my tails with me because again, it just kinda makes sure we weave everything in. Oh, you know what? I just realized I missed one here. So I wasn't as good at this as I thought I was. Okay, so now I've got my last single crochet for that row. Okay, so chain one, and we're gonna turn the corner. Before we do that, I'm gonna come back to this slip knot. Remember our slip knot from the beginning? Pull it nice and tight. And that'll basically hide that knot, and then we'll just crochet right on over it. So now working into the, the very first chain stitch here that we have under our crochets from the first row, single crochet. And just continue working over those tails. This bottom chain can be a little tricky because sometimes it's a little tight to get into and that's okay, just take your time. And I'm gonna leave those tails there and I'll weave those in later. So now I'm just gonna be working into the bottom of those chain stitches. And as you can see, because I worked into the back bump of those chain stitches when I made my first row, I've got these really nice V's on the, on the bottom edge here. So it's really easy to know exactly where to place my hook and I don't accidentally add stitches where there shouldn't be. So I am gonna pause right here and work up to the corner and I'll show you the corner turn one more time here. So I will be right back. Okay, so I've gotten to the end of my foundation chain row here on that bottom edge and I've gotten to the corner and I'm ready to turn my corner. So here again, I am going to just chain one and single crochet around that uh, chain two space. 
single crochet into the chain one or the single crochet space and then so on and so forth evenly again just as described beforehand um, working our way towards the other edge and here again working tails as I go if I can um, again if you want to save these until later or honestly if you don't want to have to bother with working over the tails then you can just weave them in before you get to your border um, would probably be the best place to do it that way you can hide most of the tails in the body of your washcloth as opposed to having it kind of bunched um, especially with as many colors as there are like color changes that we did with this that can get a little bit bulky um, as I'm finding out here <laughs> um, so that's just another option is to just weave them in before you do your border and then you can just worry about getting your stitches even as you go on your border um, and not have to even worry about trying to crochet over your yarn tails like I am trying to make sure I don't lose them here it seems to be so many so I will finish this edge and then I will show you guys the corner one more time and then after that we will be ready for our finish and I have a little trick for you for that as well so stay tuned and I'll be right back okay so I'm ready to start here on my last uh, edge for my border and I have just finished and I'm about ready to turn my corner here so I am gonna chain one and now for this last edge we're just going to be working into this the top of the last row of stitches that we made so I'm going to start my single crochet for this edge right here where my double crochet the beginning of that row was so and then just easy peasy just one stitch per stitch and all the way across single crochet all the way I'm going to finish that up Will you guys do the same and then I will show you how to do the finish. Be right back. Okay, so I have one last stitch, one last single crochet to make here on this last edge of my uh, border and I'm going to do that like I normally would, insert and just single crochet, pull up a loop. And I will do my chain one here because when we started that row, the chain one we did at the beginning on this first edge here was just to get us our height. So this is actually to complete the corner just to match it like the way we did with all of the other ones. But from here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull my loop, my working loop to about an inch or so and take my hook out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hook and since normally we would slip stitch into this stitch right here, Normally, you would just slip stitch here, close it, and done. But then you're kind of left with this bump here, and I think that's a little unsightly. So I'm going to pull that back out and show you guys a little bit of like an invisible finish here. So I'm pulling my loop to about three quarters or an inch or so, and I'm going to take my hook and from the back side of our washcloth, we've been working around the front here. So from the back, I'm gonna insert my hook from back to front underneath the two loops in that stitch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of turn it here so that I can grab my loop, my working loop that I pulled up, and I'm gonna pull that loop through the stitch from the front to the back. Now I'm working on the back side of my fabric, of my washcloth here, sorry and I'm gonna just slip stitch like normal, like a slip knot basically, or a chain and then just pull it through. Um, leave a nice six inch tail or so, and we're gonna weave that in. And now our slip stitch is actually, the knot is like on the back side. So from the front, you really can't tell any difference. So that is how you make it. Um, it does get a little bit misshapen from working on it. So if you really want, if you're gonna gift this or something for somebody, you might wanna block it out first. But um, yeah, we've got all those half, half weaved in tails. So go back through with your darning needle and just start weaving those in. And again, 
Um, some of these ones, like your very begin, the last one we made here, you'll want to make sure that you go one way and then turn back and go back the other way too, because the more times you go back and forth, the more secure your tails are going to be. And on something as utilitarian as a washcloth, you definitely want them to be woven in really, really well. Okay, so that's how to make this go-to washcloth pattern um, with the lemon peel stitch. And as you can see too, we've got really beautiful texture. Um, just a lot of, it's a nice thick washcloth because that worsted weight cotton is so good and it's so durable. Um, this is the type of kitchen cotton. So this is pretty much, the Lily Sugar and Cream is pretty much what I use on all of my washcloths. And um, yeah. So that's basically all there is to it. You can play with this pattern, obviously, and maybe you don't want so many ends to weave in, but you wanna have some kind of color contrast. You could do maybe like a thick stripe in the middle of gray or whatever contrast color that you want, and then have the rest of it be your main color. Um, you can use those same tips and tricks for color changing that I showed you as well as weaving and um, working over your yarn tails in the process. So I hope you liked that video. If you did, give it a like or thumbs up and consider subscribing. So there's gonna be more patterns and tutorials coming your way. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them below for me and um, I will do my best to answer them. If there's anything you wanna see coming up, for sure, let me know. Um, maybe you have a particular stitch that's always giving you problems or a technique that you would like to see done. Um, I am happy to help with that as well. So I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you guys next time. Bye.